Today, the viral workaholic brings you how to change a subframe on a Jeep Compass. Regardless of whether it's in your nice concrete floor garage or your backyard, the name of the game is safety. You gotta make sure that the vehicle is secure or won't move, you got it up on jack stands. And if you're in your backyard, that you have something solid to set your jack stands on so they don't sink in the ground. Just remember when you're under there, the life you're saving is your own. Give it a shake, make sure it's solid before you get under it. The next thing we have to do is get the tires out of the way. Pretty simple, I'm not gonna spend a lot of time showing you how to take off your tires. If you're gonna take on this job, you better know how to do that. Here's a quick view of what Northern Climate can do to cheap imported steel. Skate right through it. So thanks to the salt and rust on the roads, we're gonna start tearing it apart piece. Starting with the exhaust system here. Only part I'm gonna take off here is going to be the muffler. We gotta take these little rubber grommets off to get the muffler to drop down. We'll remove these exhaust pipe clamp right back here at the back. We're gonna have to take the entire exhaust system off. Let's get the muffler out of our way so we can work around it. I removed the bolt out of the lower control arm up against the subframe. Now I'm gonna jack the shock up, take some of the tension off of it to get it pulled loose. Now I'm going to disconnect one of the four upper control arms and we're going to leave the whole wheel assembly hanging while we take the subframe out. I'm going to use my floor jack to take a little tension off the strut spring so that it'll release the bolt and make it easier to come out. Easy being a relative term that usually only applies to doing this on a lift in a garage with air tools. For the rest of us that have tenacity and determination, the viral workaholic is keeping it real on the grass. The highly sophisticated tool that you see me using right here is called a half inch ratchet with a cheater bar, an old piece of pipe. The only unrelated suspension item that you need to be concerned with when you're removing it is the speed sensor wires that are attached to the actual subframe. 
It is a 13 millimeter bolt and quite possibly the easiest thing that you will be removing today. As part of the removal process, I'm only going to remove the upper control arms from the wheel assembly. This particular upper control arm is also referred to as a camber upper control arm. With the subframe removed, it is considerably easier to remove the control arm from the subframe. Without a doubt, the most difficult bolts to remove were the four that are the subframe on. I highly recommend before you even start this project that you order new bolts off of eBay for the subframe. Two of the four bolts broke off and the other two were so badly rusted that they were not good enough to be put back to the new subframe. Leaving the wheel assemblies and the lower control arm still attached to the vehicle saved a lot of time and energy. I was able to pick up a subframe from a salvage yard for $125. The subframe, of course, had some rust on it, so I cleaned it up really good, wire brushed it, and then painted it. Not for aesthetic reasons, but just to keep the rust at bay and make it last longer. The reassembly process is pretty straightforward. Just put everything back where it was originally. When reassembling, start with the upper control arms first and get them in place and bolt it on before you attach the lower control arms. Once the upper control arms are in place, then you can start bolting together the lower control arms. I used a small floor jack to raise and lower the strut to help line up the bolts in the holes. The upper camber control arm was the last piece to the puzzle. This was the last one that I assembled to the wheel assembly. With that complete, I reattached the bracket that holds the wheel speed sensor wire. Moving over to the passenger side of the vehicle, I repeated the process, same as on the driver's side. Just a couple cautionary tips from the viral workaholic. With the amount of rust and decay in that old subframe, please make sure that you wear some eye protection. And unless your iron counts low, keep your mouth shut too. The four subframe bolts were in there so tight that I actually pulled the Jeep off the jack stands twice, so stay out from under it whenever you're pulling those subframe bolts. The lowest shop bid that I got for this job was over $800. With a little hard work and determination, the viral workaholic was able to get it done for $150. You too can do it with a little hard work and determination. So get out there and build something. If you like this video, hit the thumbs up button. If you haven't subscribed already to the viral workaholic, make sure you hit that subscribe button. Smash that notification bell and see what kind of trouble the viral workaholic can get into next. Viral workaholic is wheels down and gone.